It was a dark and silent night on February 23, 2022, when a mother's life changed forever. Tara Pekanich, who lived on the west side of Green Bay, was awakened by a loud noise at her back door around 2.30 to 3 o'clock a.m. She got out of bed and went downstairs, seeing that the basement light was still on. She heard a car speeding away from the house. She thought it was her son, Shad Therian, and his female friend, Taylor Shabiznes, leaving after spending time in the basement. But when she entered the basement to turn off the light, she found a sight that would haunt her for the rest of her days. There was a large five-gallon black bucket at the bottom of the stairs, with a striped towel covering it. Something about it caught her eye, or maybe it was a mother's intuition that something was terribly wrong. She removed the towel and gasped in horror. Inside the bucket was her son, 24-year-old Shad Therian's severed head, covered in blood, and looking back at her. She screamed and ran upstairs to wake up her boyfriend, Steve Hendricks, who called 911 in a state of panic. I'm County Public Safety, how may I help you? I'm on the uh, side living officer at 829 Stony Brook. Um, my friend just woke me up and swear that she pondered his ever head over his son. Okay. Who could do such a thing to her beloved son? And where was his friend Taylor? Had the murderers taken her to? The police arrived within minutes. This was the start of a chilling investigation that would shock the city of Green Bay. Before we examine the background of Shad Therian, please drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Your support means a lot. Shad Therian was born in 1997 in the town of Green Bay, Wisconsin. He was a kind-hearted and talented young man who had a bright future ahead of him. He worked with his father and grandfather at their family business learning the value of hard work and dedication. He had a hobby for wood carving and was known as a happy, cheerful person. He enjoyed the simple pleasures of life, camping, playing games, and spending time with his family. He had a casual relationship with his friend, Taylor Shabuznes, a girl he had known since middle school. They had a history and a connection, but they never committed to each other. They were both free spirits, they were friends with benefits. Taylor, despite being married to a man who was serving time in jail, found comfort and pleasure in her relationship with Shad. But where was Taylor the night Shad was murdered? When Detective Scanlon arrived at the scene to investigate, Tara, Shad's grieving mother, pointed him toward a five-gallon bucket in the basement. Lifting the towel that covered it, he was met with an appalling sight. A human head, severed from the neck, blood was everywhere. He immediately took a step back and looked around the crime scene. There was a mattress in the distance. Upon walking close, he noticed blood stains on the mattress, along with signs of a cleanup on the concrete surface next to and under the bed. Also observed was evidence of blood around a stand-up shower and partially wiped away blood drops on the shower floor. There was evidence of drug use. A glass pipe was found with a bag containing light-colored powder material, later confirmed to be methamphetamine. The crime scene was brutal. Additional details were observed. Body parts were found in the basement in several bags, some in plastic shopping bags and others in a large storage tote. They also found three knives, including a worn-down bread knife. Within the tote they found the torso which bore signs of numerous cuts where the head used to be. Additional internal organs were in the tote, along with a carving knife. The head in the bucket was visually identified as Shad Therian. Upon closer examination, Dr. Tranchita, a forensic investigator, noted there was visual evidence of strangulation. Also in the bucket was a male organ, along with body fluid and two additional knives. Each piece of evidence, each body part, painted a gruesome picture of the crime that had taken place in the basement. 
Taylor was the last person seen alive with Shad, and she was their main suspect. Was she the one who committed this atrocious crime? Born on November 23, 1997, to Marla and Arturo Coronado, Taylor Denise Coronado, later known as Taylor Shabusiness, was a woman marked by tragedy from a young age. At just 11, she lost her mother, a loss that would cast a long shadow over her life. Her only sibling, AJ, died in a motorcycle crash at the age of 22, leaving her alone in a world that seemed to be constantly shifting beneath her feet. Taylor's life took another turn when her father remarried. She and her brother found themselves living in the basement during this time. Taylor worked at a cheese factory. Her father's marriage fell apart when he was accused of a crime involving a minor and was now serving a 12-year sentence for his crime. During this chaos, Taylor found a semblance of stability in her relationship with Warren Shabusiness. They married on Valentine's Day in 2020. Together, they had a son, Matteo. However, he was taken away by Child Protective Services at birth. Matteo is currently living with Taylor's paternal grandparents in Texas. Taylor's life was far from settled. Her husband, Warren, was convicted of federal drug charges related to meth and was serving his sentence at SCI Oxford, a medium security facility. Taylor herself had her first felony arrest on June 21, 2020, and was charged with several offenses, including evading, eluding, and obstruction of an officer. Was Taylor's tumultuous life what led her down a path so grim that few could have predicted what she was capable of? In the pre-dawn hours of February 23, 2022, the Green Bay Police Department embarked on a critical mission to locate Taylor Shabusiness. The evidence collected from the crime scene had led them to her, turning the investigation into a race against time. Officer Russell was dispatched to an address on Eastman Avenue, Taylor's last known residence. A van parked outside caught his attention. The dispatcher mentioned she used to frequently drive a van belonging to her roommate. As Officer Russell approached the van for inspection, a figure emerged from the apartment building. It was Taylor. Her clothing bore the disturbing marks of what appeared to be dried blood. Upon spotting the officers, she froze. Officer Russell asked if she knew why they were there, to which she responded, because of my warrant for my arrest. She was immediately arrested. Examining the van, Detective Luberta reported he could see a large box on top of a laundry basket of clothes behind the driver's seat. Once a search warrant for the vehicle was issued, they made a grisly discovery. Additional human body parts, including legs, were concealed inside that large box. Investigating her computer detectives learned she had a disturbing fascination with the infamous serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer. In the week leading up to Shad Tyrion's murder, Taylor Shabusiness had conducted searches such as Jeffrey Dahmer walking into court all sexy and Jeffrey Dahmer's butt. Eleven days prior to the murder, Shabusiness took a bizarre selfie. The image showed her posing next to a cell phone, which displayed an image of the cannibal serial killer. These findings were crucial pieces of the psychological puzzle that was Taylor's disturbed mind, a puzzle that investigators were just scratching the surface of. As she was escorted to the station, Officer Russell informed Detective Graff, who was assigned to interrogate her, that she appeared to have a significant amount of blood on her clothing. Detective Graff also noted a cut on her left thumb and scratches on her arms and hand. According to Shabusiness, these injuries were self-inflicted. Additionally, her hands bore red stains that Detective Graff believed to be blood. The evidence at the crime scene and on her clothing linked her to the murder of Shad Therian. However, the police still needed to hear her side of the story. Detective Graff advised her of her rights and initiated the conversation. We have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. He informed her that officers had found Shad Therian's head in a bucket at his mother's house a few hours earlier. Taylor's response was succinct. That is pretty effed up. Detective Graff asked Taylor if she knew Shad Therian, and she said she did. He confirmed the van she drove belonged to her roommate, 
and that she drove the van that morning. He then asked her where the rest of the victim's body was. She stated it was still in the basement. Detective Graff asked her to tell him what happened, and Taylor's first comment was that is a good question, because she had blacked out during that time. She said it was just her and Shad in the basement, and that nobody else had come down. She said they were smoking meth, which she referring to as, quote, the bitch. And that soon after this, they were both having sexual intercourse. She said she put a chain around Shad's neck. The strangulation was part of the act. Shabiznis admitted that she didn't mean to kill Shad, but she was choking him and liked it, so she just kept doing it. She goes into explicit detail how she could feel the victim's heartbeat as she was choking him. Despite this, she continued to pull on the chains. When asked if the victim was fighting back at all, she said, he did but he was lying face down, and she was on top of him. Detective Graff inquired about the moment she became certain that the victim was no longer alive. Shabiznis responded that she realized the victim was dying when his face turned purple and blood started to flow from his mouth, and she continued to observe his face, anticipating his death. When asked if she enjoyed it, she said, quote, yeah, I liked it, and it took around three to five minutes for Shad to succumb. Chillingly, she then posed a question to the detective asking if they understood what it felt like to love something so intensely that you would kill for it. However, once Shad passed away, she didn't stop there. She said she played with the victim's body for up to three hours, at one point even cuddling with it. She said, quote, I was sucking and cutting at the same time. It was very exciting. Shabiznis stated the plan was for her to bring all of the body parts with her, but she got lazy and only ended up putting the leg in the van forgot about the head. Detective Graff inquired about the method she used to dismember the body. Shabuznis revealed that she utilized knives from the residence's kitchen, finding the bread knife to be the most effective due to its serrated blade. She mentioned she pulled the body to the edge of the bed and used the black bucket and toe to catch the blood. She would then dump the blood into the shower drain and then stuff the body parts into bags she found around the basement. At no point during her questioning did she seem to show any remorse for her actions or empathy for her victim. In fact, her only regret seemed to be that she forgot to bring the head back home. Taylor Shabuznis, the woman who had confessed to the brutal murder and dismemberment of Shad Therian, was now facing the consequences of her actions. She was charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. She pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect, a plea that would require her to prove that she was insane at the time of the crime. The trial began on February 14, 2023, a date that ironically marked the third anniversary of Taylor's marriage to Warren Shabiznis. The trial was presided over by Judge John Walsh, who had witnessed Taylor's attack on her previous lawyer, Jolly. Jolly had requested the trial date to be pushed back so experts could determine Taylor's competency to stand trial, but Taylor had lunged at him in the courtroom, screaming obscenities. Jolly was replaced by Christopher Froelich, who also requested that Walsh recuse himself as his witnessing the attack could affect his ruling. Walsh denied the request, stating that he could remain impartial. The trial proceeded, with the prosecution and the defense presenting their arguments and evidence. The prosecution argued that Taylor had acted with premeditation and intent, pointing to her online searches about Jeffrey Dahmer, her bizarre selfie, and her confession. They also argued that Taylor had enjoyed killing and mutilating Shad, citing her statements to the detectives and the evidence of sexual assault. They presented forensic experts, police officers, and Tara Pekanich as witnesses, painting a gruesome picture of the crime. The defense argued that Taylor was suffering from a mental disorder, possibly schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, 
that impaired her ability to appreciate the wrongfulness of her actions. They also argued that Taylor had acted under the influence of drugs, namely methamphetamine and trazodone, that altered her perception of reality. They presented psychiatric experts, Taylor's family members, and Taylor herself as witnesses, painting a sympathetic picture of the defendant. The jury deliberated for less than an hour before returning with their verdict. They found Taylor guilty on all charges, rejecting her insanity plea. Taylor showed no emotion as the verdict was read, while Tara Pekanich sobbed in relief. On September 26, 2023, Taylor was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Walsh said he had to protect the public from her, calling her crime an offense to human decency, dignity, and community. Shad's father, Michael Therian, forgave Taylor, saying, I believe everybody makes bad choices, maybe not to this scale. It does no good to hate you. I know you've got a heart, got a mind. The trial and verdict marked the end of a long and painful ordeal for the families and friends of Shad and Taylor. There was some semblance of justice and closure for the families of this horrific and sadistic crime. We remember Shad not just as a victim, but as a person, a son, a friend, an artist. His story is a reminder that behind every headline, every crime, there is a human life that was lived and lost. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel and like and share this video. Check out my entire true crime playlist for cases which examine the dark side of human nature. Your support is very much appreciated. <coughs>